This is a, an example of a fumed staircase done by Apple Contemple Incorporated, Skokie, Illinois. The fumed staircase allows the wood to become basically an antique. It allows the wood to look over 100 years old. The medullary rays in the wood plus the tannin properties in the white oak, quartered white oak, allows the wood to react in such a way that it's just, it's, it's beautiful. It looks correct with the house. People walk into the house, they believe that the staircase and the flooring is original to the house, but it's not. But by fuming the wood, it's basically a tribute to Mother Nature. But it's quite difficult to do correctly and consistently. Um, as you see here, the wood, the spindles, everything just flows. But it didn't start out that way. It started out as uh, basically the, the, the coal, the structure. Then it's covered in plywood. Plywood is then covered over in with the quartered white oak. Here you can see a variation in the white oak, but by fuming, it takes like 10 variations and condenses them down to like five variations. So it's not like on, off, on, off, or a sore thumb. It mellows everything out so it's harmonious with one another. The house consists of three stories, three staircases in the front, three-story staircase, and then in the back there's a four-story staircase. A lot of work. There's 5,000 square feet and flooring alone. The flooring was done in the shop. The staircase was all done on the job site. So to marriage both processes together and get identical results, that was a, a an achievement. But by doing woodwork for what, 40 years, you learn some tricks of the trade as well as how the wood reacts. The process of prepping the material is very important. Everything has to be prepped consistently. Just like staining a piece of wood, if one piece of wood is 60 grit, another one's 80 grit, another one's 120, 150, you're going to have a variation. So everything has to be brought to the same grit. And then you have the ammonia process, which is fuming. Ammonia, what's neat about that is by the end grain, or longitudinally, the wood will absorb about three quarters of an inch. The, on the face grain, the radial and tangential sides, it will absorb about an eighth of an inch. It's important because when you stain something, it's basically paper thin, whereas ammoniating or fuming, the color becomes, you know, heavy sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. So when it becomes scratched or the finish, the, the surface is disrupted, that's okay. Only the surface is disrupted, not the color. You never want to disrupt the patina, the mother nature's natural aging of the wood. And by ammoniating or fuming, you make this thickness you know, up to an eighth of an inch. So the, the flooring or the staircase is easily repaired, unlike staining. This part here is done in the shop. Parts of the staircase was done in the shop, but the majority was done on the job site problem with the spindles you have a combination of in grain and face grain so to get that consistency it was quite a quite a chore but it did come out very well and you can see in in the pictures what the the variation in the spindles but once the final coats are applied the consistency is is quite close you know within four or five shade variations unlike at the beginning there was 10 or 15 variations. Here on the job site, the majority is done in the shop with the spindles, but on the job site, once everything's put together, a lot of you still have the sanding, you still have the scotch writing, then you still have two more coats of oil to be applied. There you could, you could see how consistent the spindles done in the shop were with the flooring. Here's another example of the flooring and the banquette, how everything was ammoniated the same way in the process and the color, the consistency. Here's an example right after ammoniating. The tannin properties in the wood reacts. It looks pretty 
sort of sort of sad there, but once more coats are applied and the consistency starts to mellow out, the results are beautiful. But unfortunately with some areas of the white oak, sap for example, is harder to ammoniate. So you want to cut down the, the amount of sap, keep it to a minimum. The other thing about masking off the area, sometimes the tannin will drip and you don't want that. So you got to make sure that it's everything sprayed and everything is protected well. And always inspect the work. Here you can see the consistency of the color from that picture we saw a while ago where it looked all brown. Now it's becoming more and more mellow, more tan. And then the more coats that are applied, the more richness is achieved and the results are beautiful. Here's a combination of end grain, face grain, all together. But then when it's all done, everything mellows out and it looks beautiful as well. You can see how the oil begins to fill the pores of the wood. And the beautiful richness of the, the wood is, is uh, susceptible to sunlight. Sunlight will give it one look. Incandescent lighting will give another look. Fluorescent will give another look. Here's an example of how the surfaces are scraped. By scraping, you can scrape a lot and you're not even into the color. Because once again, the ammonia absorbs up to an eighth of an inch onto the, or the radial and tangential sides of the wood. So if and when there's damage, you can go at it with a scraper. Unlike uh, polyurethane and uh, stain, you, you never do that. Later there was a runner applied on top of all the beautiful wood, but that was so the kids would be protected. Once again, the medullary rays are just beautiful. Stain kills the medullary rays, whereas with the fuming process, the medullary rays, they, they just pop. And it's so, so beautiful. The carvings, once again, all in grain, so that color consistency and the fill uh, took a little while. Matching up a pre-finished floor that was done in the shop with the, floor, uh, with the transition pieces that were done on the job site. They were uneven, scrape it all the way down, make it even, and yet the finish comes out beautiful. It's not like you have to refinish the floor because of unevenness. This process is very forgiving. The second floor was all chevron, the first floor, and the third floor was all straight, straight grain. The back staircase, because of all the angles, everything had to be done on the job site and complete, and all the fuming had to be done around all those funny angles. We dedicated this staircase to my dad, which was done by myself and my two sons, and we were missing one of my sons there. He's off in college, but um, we dedicated to my, my dad, David Lewis Apple. He recently just passed. But... We dedicate it, and then we put the cap back on the newel and glued it in, so it's time-capsuled um, forever. He should be proud of the job. It came out really well. It's a beautiful example of fuming, 
and a combination of fuming in the factory as well as on the job site and coming up with excellent and consistent results. Once again, it's done by Apple Contempo Incorporated, Skokie, Illinois.